How's everyone doing? Welcome, welcome, welcome to the final episode of After the After Hours with your boy Trader Pratt. The final day of this week it is, is tomorrow going to be a free fall Friday. Now get, get, ready. get ready for tomorrow. If you guys are ready, hit, 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 that, hit that like and subscribe. Hit that, hit, that, hit that like and subscribe. Thank you guys for all the love. Thank you guys for all the support. Yo, what is up, Chad? How's everyone doing? Welcome back to another episode with your boy Trader Pratt. It's been a wonderful Tuesday here in Toronto, Canada. Wonderful weather. I mean, it's a little chilly, but boy, was the sun out there and was it amazing. Good weather today. Went for a nice little walk. Obviously, can't go for a full out walk, but went for whatever walk I could uh, during the lunch hour before Powell started taking over the microphone. Some volatility there from Powell later on in the day, but the market pretty much didn't really do a whole lot today right the market just kind of stuck in a range we at, at during powell's session we got a little bit of a volatility chop session of the downside chop session of the upside a lot of stop burns either direction but gave you some money making opportunities quick little scalps or so throughout the day you got to scalp the range all day if you were looking for the, those type of opportunities but the stocks across the board gave you a lot of opportunities to play with bank stocks that were moving around some of the stocks that we were talking about yesterday even some of the small cap uh uh, lower price stocks that we were talking about yesterday such as DeFi ended up giving you a good trade exactly this type of trade that we were talking about stream yesterday but my main trade was DJT DJT short day two monster move on DJT of another I shouldn't say another because day one was 18% Today, we got a 14% sell-off to the downside on DJT. So, monster move over there after being up 2% in pre-market. So, back-to-back -back triggering SSR days coming in. That means the stock will be on SSR again tomorrow. We'll talk about more DJT in depth. Look for more possible trade opportunities going forward. But a big reversal from $71 not that long ago all the way down to what $23 is what I remember seeing at today it could have gone lower from there but I think I remember seeing at $23 but uh, overall the markets are not looking so hot because Powell uh, had a little bit of a, a conference with the Canadian finance minister or something like that and and uh, they were talking about interest rates and interest rate decisions and, and how you know inflation is not really going down the way they want to see it go down they're talking about rates being held a little bit longer or even raising rates so lots of things over there coming into play with the with the powell speech today and the powell conference that the market clearly might be gearing up for a little bit of a down move might be gearing up for a little bit of a bear season bear strike season coming into play and obviously whoa i saw lights going off lights what is it we got ani with the two dollar super chat might actually have to vote for you this year f my life <laughs> That's right. Got to vote for DJT, baby. Or should I say PJT? PJT. Uh, but overall, 
big big moves on the downside over here yesterday on the market a little bit of nothing move today absolutely flat markets i think qqq was barely even up s p 500 was also pretty much flat if i remember correctly overall we're looking to see if that downside move that got triggered from yesterday and the nothing move from today along with the whole powell comments do we get some sort of an extension to the downside in the market giving us some trade opportunities on apple apple pulled back drastically today big move back on apple right back into that 170 even 169 168 area so deep pullback on apple today uh at a couple of the large cap stocks were doing good. Amazon, Google, they were doing good decently at the very least. But uh, I'm, I'm guessing with the whole market uh, craziness later on in the day, they probably went a little crazy too. But overall, market didn't really look that weak in terms of market. I'm talking about the, the large cap stocks. The large cap Magnificent 7 didn't really look that weak until Apple pulled back on, uh, pulled back on itself pretty drastically. Uh, so because of that, being bearish just yet almost feels illegal because we want to see actually have to vote for this year that shit scares the shit out of me these days i i don't know when it's gonna play it is this gonna come out of nowhere and usually it's between during my mid-sentence and it just scares the crap out of me thank you for the two dollar super chat might have to vote for me again you will have to um but you know being extremely bearish right now feels almost illegal i feel like i want to see a little bit more proof for me to to really start pulling that uh, big big size on the short side over here on the overall market on the qqq on the spies or even on any other large cap stocks so i'm gonna have to wait a little bit maybe any pullbacks to the north side or should i say any any reversals to the north side do they get sold off do they get bought back even more so lots of questions over here on the overall market th mentioning oh and coin that's right bitcoin went back to 63 62k or so and that took coinbase the downside pretty drastically coinbase went to a 206 today i was short coinbase at one point but the it got stopped out and then it eventually started crashing to 206 that was not fun watching that stock go crumble on itself without me being involved in it but yeah coinbase was a pretty big move to the downside was uh, was looking at that trade for sure but why don't we get started since we're talking about all things stocks right off the bat anyways why don't we get started dive into the big screen talk about all things tomorrow that's on store on the watch list for myself see what else could be fine see some stocks at some decent levels chart them and uh, maybe put them in our notes so let's get started but before we get there let's see who all is in the chat Dider, what's up Dider? hopefully you're doing well th john victoria ani and zamzam what's up zamzam this is huge that meme is amazing. Huge. Habibi, I like that. No one's ever called me Habibi before. Now I'm, now I'm blushing. See what you do, Zamzam, every single time. Every single time, as soon as Zamzam shows up, I just start blushing. Let's get off my face. <laughs> get off my face. All right. Let's go to... The watch list instead of going straight to the watch list actually let's start off with talking about the earnings board for tomorrow the pre-market earnings board looks pretty impressive because of asml now obviously asml is a 900 dollars position not something that i might even look for a trade unless there's a really clear pattern the spread's going to be like five dollars it's going to be crazy but there's going to be possibly some good opportunities over here it's a semiconductor company good chance that this moves other semiconductor companies like tsm who reports on thursday amd nvidia um micron and, and a bunch of other uh, positions over there so you might want to watch how asml reports their earnings abt not really a stock that i remember trading ever but uh, when i looked at their position there there's oh should i say that the chart the chart looks pretty decent chart looks decent the stock does decent amount of volume too so i put it on my watch just to be interested and to see how it moves any of these other movers over here are just not important to me at all they barely do any volume, so I don't really care about what they do uh, in the slightest bit. But we do care about the stocks that reported earnings today pre-after hours, United Airlines and Interactive Brokers. But that Interactive Brokers, very, very little care about Interactive Brokers. Usually not a tra day trade opportunity being given on the stock. It will trade sideways. It's boring. It's a boomer position. But when I looked at their chart, 
they are doing kind of a little bit of a crazy move. They, they've been kind of going off to the high side, going into, I guess, the all-time high over there. Yeah, recently cracking into the all-time high not too long ago, now getting a little bit of a pullback right before their earnings report. I saw their after-hours move. Who's messaging me? Fuck off. Uh, I saw that their after-hour move wasn't really that, that interesting either. Who the hell is this? Oh, okay. I know who it is. I was wondering who the hell is this person messaging me right now. All right. IBKR, not really too much of a move in the after hours off the earnings report. And you can see how it's just, you know, nothing burger trades usually. It's a boomer position, moves at an absolute snail's pace. So not something that I would be looking to trade on a momentum type of spe spectrum. But if it does set up in like a swing trade type of idea where I could get in and kind of look to uh, see if I can ride the stock all the way into end of the day. If that opportunity shows up, if the chart set up, if the tape set up and everything, then that might be something for us to take a look at. But more importantly, the stock that we really do care about is that United Airlines. And that's what we're going to start off with. We still have a bunch of other stocks on the watch list that come from previous earnings report uh, or not previous earnings report. The earnings that reported not too long ago, basically the banks, the bank sector, BAC moved pretty drastically to the downside today. J&J, &J, the only other non-bank stock from the earnings basket because we have Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs and JP Morgan also in the watch list, along with, as I mentioned, AVT. I did have ASML in the watch list, but I deleted it after remembering that it was a $900 position. So that one gets deleted out of there right away. Uh, coming coming down the watch list a little bit is just a repetition of our watch list. You got DXYZ, which gave you a beautiful short opportunity today. A $10 fade from the highs. DJT gave you a pretty good short from $29 all the way into $23. So beautiful short over there on DJT. Reddit, haven't, haven't watched Reddit today at all, but we will probably look at Reddit later on in the day. Uh, as TH mentioned in the chat, Coinbase making a little bit of a move to the downside, but it got bought right back up later on we'll see if coinbase and the rest of the coinbase stocks or not coinbase sorry bitcoin based stocks give us some sort of a volatility especially if bitcoin starts breaking to the downside and gets under that sad number of 60k beautiful bounce off of 60k one more time right back up to 63,000 64,000 but still having that little bit of a fear behind that position fear behind that basket as as uh, it looks like the the doom is imminent the 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 downside is very very soon coming in and especially if that downside breaks i want to take that shorts on on these cryptocurrency uh, uh etfs that have been recently new to the market so we'll be watching that because a lot of people will probably be caught offsided on the long side on these stocks. That's why. Uh, we talked about semiconductor positions because of ASML. Most uh, most likely they will kind of sympathy trade along with ASML. So I'll be watching that. So watching AMD, not really Intel, but Intel is on the watch list ever since that stock has been moving recently to the downside. But uh, yeah, AMD, Micron, ARM, TSM, uh, and NVIDIA, probably the ones that I'll be watching as my sympathy trades to ASML. And we have the Magnificent 7 AMA, AAPL. Boy, oh boy, what a move that stock has today to start off with but then later on an insane reversal right back to the downside so we'll talk about that a little bit deeper once we get to that stock but starting with ual which is what reported earnings after hours so let me quickly open up our trusty tool hello get away from me that's weird it won't let me close the chat see if I can refresh it bring in Benzinga there we go now I got to close the chat okay we are looking for United Airlines earnings report so let's go take a look at that shares left the runway in Tuesday after hour session on the heels of the company's first quarter financial results is it up or down looks like it's up five percent in the after hours so far so good report hopefully here the look at the key metrics from the quarter q1 earnings united airlines reported first quarter revenue of 12.5 billion dollars which beat the consensus estimates of 12.4 billion the company reported an adjusted quarterly loss of 15 cents per share which beat the analyst estimates of 57 cents per share that's a huge beat so a uh, huge beat over there lost much less 
uh, uh, than than lost much narrower than expected. Um, United United said capacity was up 9.1 on the year over year basis. Trasm total revenue per available seat mile. Okay, okay. Uh, was up 0.6% while cost per available seat mile was down 0.6%. Total revenue per available seat mile versus cost per available seat mile. So cost went up, but your total revenue went up too by the same amount. So you basically canceled each other over there. Uh, United said it converted a portion of Boeing Company Max 10 orders to Boeing 9 Max orders from 2025 to 2027. The company also agreed to letters of intent with two lesser, two lessers, lessors to lease 35 new Airbus A321 Neos expected in 2026 to 2027. And if I remember correctly, United also was uh, going to take, what, 12 new frights from Boom or whatever? I guess that's the old one. That might be an old catalyst, not something new. But United also taking 10 new of those uh, Concorde supersonic jets that they'll be making, uh, they'll be making soon. United end of the quarter, $16.9 billion in total liquidity, $27.2 billion in total debt, and financial lease obligations. Uh, we adjusted our fleet plan to better reflect the reality uh, of what the manufacturers are able to deliver. We uh, and, and we'll use those planes to capitalize on the opportunity on on an opportunity that only United has profitability, grow our con con continent hubs and expand our highly profitable international network from our best in best in the industry coastal hubs, said the CEO. Outlook, this is the important part. The United Airlines reiterated expectations for the full year 2024 adjusted earnings from $9 to $11 per share versus $9.65. I guess you could say within a range over there, but the range high is pretty much uh, uh, almost $2 higher than the than the estimate and the range low is slightly underestimate. So I guess that's a good, good news. Company also said it now anticipates 61 narrow body aircrafts and five wide body aircrafts to be delivered in 2024, given the 737 max grounding and produce production capacity constraints. So they're just saying that hey, even though Boeing this, Boeing that, uh, we are going, we are on a good feet. We don't really, we're not really worried about it too much, and we're buying X amount of new jets, and we're buying X amount of new planes. Uh, this is how much debt we have. So basically, everything that they're saying so far is is. Pretty Pretty much good and the stock took five percent to the upside off that report apparently here is the earnings move beautiful move launching right back to the upside at the moment and let's kind of go back to the daily chart here where do we go somewhere into this range because i don't even see this last week high market coming into play just short of last week's high so we're looking for maybe uh, you know a hold of this area and a breakthrough above this area based on how decent of a report that is now granted i'm not an analyst that's something that i have to remind myself anytime i i look at earnings reports and i create a bias for myself it usually ends up hurting me because i force the bias and i ignore what the stock is telling me the report might be great it looks pretty good but what the market is doing with that report is way more important what the big money what the real money is doing with that report with that position on that day is way more important sometimes i take my biases from these reports way too serious and i kind of force my trade and i get beat up on it so i gotta remind myself that I am not an analyst. I am a day trader. My job is to look for the right areas to get in when the opportunity shows up. And if the opportunity is not to the long side tomorrow, and if it's to the short side off of this last week's high of $45, $44.75 area, then I don't want to be fighting that long above it. So waiting to see how the stock trades over here. For me, there is no real long above uh, until the stock really gets above 45 and stays above 45. And above 45, we do have a couple areas of interest over here right into $46 or so looks like could be our, our one area of resistance on on uh, UAL another one into $48 I don't think we see $48 tomorrow the ATR of the position is a dollar 55 alone so anywhere into 46 after breaking 45 saying i'm thinking we open near 45 a break above 45 to 46 could be something to think about and that could possibly top out over there overall this is an insane 
ATR if you think about it. Usually I try to look at the ATR of the day's range, but people also look at ATR from yesterday's close, in which case the stock is doing multiple, multiple ATR, not just a dollar fifty. It's doing multiple ATR. So expecting the stock to go higher than 46.25 or maybe even higher than maybe over here into into whatever this is, into 47. Could be a little crazy, but we have seen crazy happen on the market multiple times. So I'll be ready for any any possible opportunities but at the moment i see some possible headwind going into this 44 75 slash 45 area on ual and above that we got that 46 to 46 25 area so just going to put that in my notes as res possible resistances and then we'll see how the stock behaves in pre-market uh let quickly go to the five minute chart here and kind of show you what i mean by that what i expect from this position in pre-market is something like this we hold over here, we go over here, we kind of break that and we come back and then we bounce and then we kind of go to a new high into $46. So I'm looking for this little pullback to hold. Possibly this is where VWAP is. This possibly this is where VWAP is. Once it pulls back to VWAP and then bounces back, I'm looking for this long over here. Or if the stock does this, if it opens up over here, then I'm looking for that resolution above this high or below this low. That way I can ride it back to the downside for that gap fade, which a lot of positions recently have been doing off of earnings. For example, the bank stocks, every single bank stock, good earnings report, pre-market, they go up, but then they get sold right back to the downside. Goldman Sachs did that very same thing. JP Morgan going on a day three run to the downside now. So multiple, multiple downside moves and fades and giveaways coming into play on all these positions. Uh, UAL obviously not being a bank uh, a stock, but it'll be hard to expect something different at the moment. And especially with the way the market's moving, market's not really seeing that buying that you might want to see after the selling that you saw yesterday. For so far, every single sell off like that has been bought right back up the next day and more for the next few days. Today was like one of those first few days where, where the market sells off the previous day and we don't actually reverse that whole move and go back to yesterday's high or even above yesterday. Today's high. Today was just a neutral candle, almost like the market standing still, wait and see how the big names report their earnings, and then we can kind of kickstart making a move. It makes sense, right? If you're big money, if you are a hedge fund, or if you're some sort of a, a wealth management fund or something, and, and uh, you need to deploy billions and billions of dollars into work for you or your clients or whatever, you might be hands off at the moment and seeing exactly how Netflix, Tesla, Apple, Google, how do these reports start looking like? Because those technically dictate the market. The market today, I think the ADR was, ADR is advanced decliners, uh, uh, ta uh, tick is, is how many stocks are up or how many stocks are down at one time. So let me actually go here and show you that chart. So at one point a day today, I mean, for the whole day today, ADR was in the red and, and, and down 1.8. Uh, this is VOLD. Ignore VOLD for now. But tick goes slightly positive right back to red. Like, I guess tick goes back and forth, back and forth multiple times. But this is showing you that most stocks were just declined on the day. But the market's absolutely flat. And that's because of the big dogs in the market who are still up on the day. Microsoft. Oop, I don't want to do that. Let's go back to the main chart. Microsoft up on the day, Nvidia up on the day, Apple slightly down on the day, sadly, but they were up on the day for quite a bit. Amazon flat on the day, Google should be up on the day slash flat, flat on the day. So the big dogs are basically hanging, they're not moving at all. So waiting to see if these big dogs can start getting sold off more or do they get bought back up again. And in that case, you get to see which way the market probably moves at. So be careful for that. Uh, it's Melania here. Trump looking sexy. <laughs> BTC halves this week. These drops could be fake outs. That's true. I almost forgot about that. BTC fake outs. Sorry, not fake outs. Uh, having is this this week or weekend could be anywhere during this week. Honestly, nobody knows the dates, but everyone's saying is during Friday to next Monday. So Bitcoin having will be happening and that will be cutting about 6 million coins into 3 million coins. So that'll be interesting. Is that a Trader TV hat you got on? No, I got a Clear Street hat on. Shout out to Clear Street. Got a Clear Street hat on. 
Uh, for those of you that trade with Centerpoint, shout out to Clear Street. Got to meet their CEO and a bunch of other people not too long ago at a at a, a, a trader meetup that they were hosting in Toronto because they recently opened up a brokerage in uh, in Canada. They are now a legal brokerage in Canada. So pretty interesting over there for my Canadians. We don't have a lot of options to trade with, especially if you're trying to short stocks. It sucks for us. But if you are interested, there is a new brokerage in town, not affiliated with them by any chance, any means. But maybe one day I get the chance to. Uh, but go check them out. Center Point in Canada. Pretty, pretty good, uh, decent, decent brokerage over there. A lot of big time traders in America trade with Center Point. But let me turn off the transitions so we can go back to full cam like that, just like that. But I could put on a Trader TV hat. I should have it somewhere here. Where's my Trader TV hat? Did I hang it up on my on my other door? I think I hung it up on my other. I think it's under that hat right there. Yeah, it is. I can put on my Trader TV hat, but I want to burn this hat. I want to burn this hat but yeah there you go there's a trader tv hat i i burned the hoodie i'm joking i gave the hoodie to my mom because the hoodie was uh too small for me it says large on the hoodie but the hoodie is uh it, it's small it does not fit it does not fit i have large hoodies that fit me perfectly fine the trader tv live hoodie does not fit me at all had to throw that one in the dirt. My mom said, no, well, give it to me. I'm going to use it. So she uses it. My dad uses it. But uh, here's the Trader TV Live hat that I don't wear as much anymore for obvious reasons. For obvious reasons. But uh, yeah, it just stays over there. You know what? It's a, it's a good piece of memento for for all the hard work that I did and, and got shafted from. It's a good piece of memento, right? No, it it's, uh, just goes to, it's a good reminder for me that, hey, don't work hard for anybody else ever again. Work hard for yourself, make it work for yourself, make it pay for yourself. And if it doesn't, whatever, just don't work hard for anybody ever again. That's what it teaches me. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's like a poster on the wall. Like that poster I have, you guys probably can't see that poster, can you? Um, hold up. That poster on the wall there, you know, all hail the king, uh, uh, Walter White. Reminds me to get my bread, get my money, get my bread, the main focus. But that hat over there reminds me to never work hard for anybody other than yourself. If you want to bet on somebody, bet on yourself, chat. Bet on yourself. I bet on me. All right. All that nonsense aside, let's get back to the fun stuff. Because we're only one stock deep so far and it's almost 30 minutes into the market today or show today. Uh, big buy orders today on the index says Oso. I mean, uh, didn't even do anything. The market did nothing. Market did absolutely zilch. Three to four days looks fresh. Three to four days for what? Oh yeah, the having. I'm guessing you're talking about the having. Pratt said he's on his. I'm gonna mute both of you guys for ten minutes. Damn it! I don't think I can do it because you guys are both modded. <laughs> uh uh nice i'd i'd use it when doing housework you wear hats when when you're in your house i i wait hate wearing a hat in the house but my hair is like so out of place right now i didn't comb it i didn't i didn't do anything with my hair so it's just it's just like bad hair day so I said, screw it, I'm throwing on a hat before Ani comes in over here super chatting and I'm making fun of my hat, making, uh, you know, upsetting me over here, making me want to go uh, get another haircut, spend another $800 for a haircut. And I'm joking. Whoever spends $800 for a haircut, you're crazy. But uh, had to throw on the hat over there. Also, Reapers in the chat, man. I can't be looking like this with, with beautiful ladies in the chat. So had to throw on the hat. Had to throw on the hat. It's a good memento indeed. You did make it a place of trade. You will make a great trucker with those work ethics. <laughs> Yo, get this guy out of here. Mods, get him. Mods, get this hating fuck. <laughs> All right, let's continue. Stocks, that one's a good one. You'll, be, you'll make a good trucker with that good work ethic. All right, I see how it is. 
I wear a hat because I don't want shit to fall into my wonderful hair. Yeah, if you keep wearing a hat long enough, you won't have that wonderful hair anymore. It's gonna all fall out and you're gonna go bald, baldy. Uh, IBKR, very interesting. Maybe that's why you wear hats all the time because you're bald. Did we just catch Doomlord? Is this why Doomlord's always mad and, and just raging in Discord? It's because he's bald and he hates himself? Whoa, I think I'm on something here, chat. Alright, ban him for that comment. Ban him for that comment. Get him out of here. I'm joking. I'm joking. All right, let's get back to the work over here, guys, because we don't have a lot of time. Only 30 minutes left on the stream, and I want to go through a bunch of stocks over here. So let's go to IBKR, Interactive Brokers. They also reported their earnings today. So you know where we're going to head over to? Head over to Benzinga. Go check out Benzinga in the description link down below. Amazing news source. They help me with everything news. You see me using them every time during earnings season, even off of earnings season times. But this is why I hate IBKR, because... The, no one says anything about them in their reports. No one trades this stock. Boomers trade this position. Boomers like Doom over here. So let's see what the stock is doing. Reported quarterly earnings of 1.64. Beat the analyst estimates of 1.63. Awesome. Uh, quarterly sales of 1.22. Beat analyst estimates of 1.20. Barely. Uh, this is a 15% increase from last year. Okay. Okay, not bad. 1.06 to 1.2 billion increase. Not bad. Overall, a nothing burger report. And you saw a nothing burger action take place in the after hours. Now, here's a quick level that might be of interest. Here's a level that might be of interest. Here's the level that might be of interest. This and this. This looks like pretty much the midpoint, kind of maybe if you can bring it down a little bit more, that's kind of the midpoint. We got the last week high over here. We got today's high. We got today's low. Today's low very much in line with this double bottom with this range low that we have. The report looks good. The report doesn't really look bad at all. Don't know what their forecast is, but the report is good. And the stock did absolutely nothing on off the report itself. But if we are able to reclaim this last week's low, this 110 area and show buying above 110, it's almost a no brainer long for us on IBKR. So I'm just going to put it in as a blue color uh, um, importance, not a high importance trade for me. But if we can clearly get above last week's high and hold above last week's high, which is 110, that's an easy long for me above it the stock's atr is pretty decent but the volume is ugly average 30-day volume is not even a million shares today however with the earnings report with the, uh the, how the market's moving and so on it brought in a good 2 million shares coming into play but overall not a trade that i would be too interested for let's go to a more interesting trade or or a couple of other interesting stocks all in the same sector bank of america or the banking sector uh bac reporting their earnings today and flushed the downside off that report not sure what's going on with these banks at all banks are absolutely getting destroyed even after good reports and so on so that's why it has me worried about ual tomorrow even though the report looked good we might just get a gap fade or sadly even a reversal back into today's ranges so be careful for that but if ual can Hello, brother. If UAL, I don't know why the why, uh, sketch just came into my mind over there. Sketch. Hello, brother. Special teams, special players, special Tuesdays. All right. Um, 45 is UAL is what we're looking at. So let's see if we can get above that. But Bank of America, uh, waiting to see how Bank of America does. Dude talking about house. I got a song stuck in my head and can't remember the damn artist. Talking about a house. I, I don't know what the song you're talking about, Buddha. Now, now you got me wondering. I found buying 5 to 10% under the level is a sweet spot. And now he's cooked. And now, now home cooked meal. Are you talking about food or stocks? What the fuck are you talking about? Before my wife bans me as dinner time. All right. Yeah, I'll see you after dinner, Doom. Enjoy your dinner. What's for dinner, though? Let me know what's for dinner. I'm hungry. I'm kind of hungry right now. Now that you mentioned food. Damn it. You guys been watching Fallout? Okay, I need to talk about stocks before I 
uh, completely derail myself over here. But have you guys been watching Fallout? Fallout has been amazing. I've been watching it on the way to uh, on the way home today. I think I finished two episodes so far. That's right. My home way home is two hours long, so I was able to finish two full episodes. I'm on the third and a half episode right now. So feel Fallout's not bad at all. Is it only eight episodes though? Cause that sucks. If it is only eight episodes, I'm gonna be done with that today. I'm gonna be done with that that ep that stream not stream but the show today. So I don't want that to happen. But Fallout, I like the way they did it. The the design's good. The set design's good. The the actor selection's good. The acting's good. The 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 direction's good. Everything that they did in that in that first season over there is actually really well. Especially with the with the Walt opening scene, I was like, damn, now I want to install Fallout 4 again and play that game. Even though it was not the greatest game over there. Maybe the first Fallout or the second Fallout will be even better uh, to play rather than Fallout 4. Because Bethesda, Bethesda, Bethesda. That's all I can say. Bethesda, Bethesda, Bethesda. For those you know, you know. If you don't know why I said that company's name three times, it is what it is. But uh, boy, oh boy, did Bethesda get one thing right. And I don't know how much play they had in the show. I have no clue how much play they had in the show, how much they wanted to uh, influence the directors or, or how much sway they had on the influence on the directors and the set designers and so on. They kind of came in and they said, no, 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 that's not right. That's not right. But boy, they kind of nailed everything so far. Everything. It was good. It was good. I like the first few episodes. It's a good first season. Yes. Commercial property. Oh, talking about houses. The game did some updates recently because people started booting it up again. The main girl actually played all the games before filming. Okay. That's awesome. That's awesome. Good job, Lucy. That's that's I guess that's a good way to kind of study the uh, uh, action that you're going to be portraying, right? A lot of... Uh, um, movie actors kind of like become that that person they're portraying so much that sometimes they like to be called that person right uh there's a story of jim carrey when he was playing andy kaufman maybe it was somebody else maybe not andy kaufman but he was playing somebody and he became yeah maybe it was andy kaufman that he became andy and he wanted to be called andy everywhere he goes uh and if anyone called him anything other than andy he would not respond he would say his name's andy he would start acting like andy start behaving like a andy and a bunch of actors on the behind the scene films are like it was crazy like he did it so well but he was almost like just engulfed by it that he became Andy for that uh, uh, it was kind of a crazy crazy uh, uh, way that Jim Carrey had to get into man on moon was that the movie I don't know the movie name never seen it but they were talking about the Jim Carrey uh, uh, method acting great acting okay I'll watch it never seen the movie Main girl actually played all... Oh, we already read that. Respecting the fans is big. Yes. I mean, if, if they did not please the fans who played Fallout, the children like me, they would not get the, the viewage. They would not get the viewage that they're looking for. For example, the Lord of the Rings uh, Prime series absolute dog shit in my opinion it was it was so bad that i i hated it and i don't think i even want to watch the rest of the episodes nor do i care about season two granted if it does come out i will watch it but the this this fallout they really did good it's the same thing with the one piece um one piece what's it called live action and and the was it attack on titan live action no not attack on titan Damn it, what's the other live action that, that came out recently that was really good? One Piece and the Avatar. The Avatar Last Airbender live action. Pretty good. Good job. I mean, you got to make the, 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 the weebs, the kids, the people who used to play this back in the day, make them interested. And the only way you can do it is by doing it the right way. Man on the Moon. Okay, I got to watch that movie. Man on the Moon. Okay. Yeah, it was Andy Kaufman. Okay. Yeah, so this guy, George Shapiro, uh, has a see uh, like that behind the scenes clip where he's talking about how Jim Carrey just kind of became Andy Kaufman, like completely became Andy Kaufman. So pretty interesting. But now I gotta become Warren Buffett so I can trade him, uh, trade like him. Sorry, trade like him. 
So let's get the, the party back on road over here with Bank of America. Pretty big move over here to the downside on that earnings report. So waiting to see on any sort of pullbacks into this little double bottom. You can kind of call this the, tr the three bar play on the daily chart. Pulling into a previous uh, support. Kind of consolidating right before the previous support. And then breaking down. You take the breakdown of this area. Now any pullbacks into this area and rejection of this area will give us even more downside. Downside right back into today's low. Or maybe even more below today's low. So watching all type of opportunities opportunities over here right into this last week's low area of $35.50. I think that's my number one priority. If Bank of America cannot sell off under $35.50, then there is no trade for us to the short side. There could be some longs, but there is no shorts uh, under $35.50, sorry, above $35.50 for me. That's my, that's my line in the sand. I'm going to wait for 35.50 area to come into play. If there's a clear sell-off before 35.50 or near 35.50, I want to join that ride to the downside. Talking about join, joining rides to the downside, why don't I actually show you my best trade on the day? DJT, ladies and gentlemen, monster move on DJT to the downside today. Day two move coming into play after that whole news that they're going to dilute themselves and so on. So big move over here. I took the breakout of the pre-market consolidation area. So in the in the pre-market, it kind of popped up a little bit. Then it had this beautiful double bottom into the pre-market around $26.50. So I just took the breakout of that pre-market double bottom. Uh, if the stock was supposed to be strong, it should not even come back here and kind of just start ripping higher and higher and higher and give me an opportunity to short into that $29 area. But if it's weak, it should have failure to follow through. It should struggle into, you know, couple two day VWAP, yesterday's VWAP, uh, and so on. And then kind of just start flushing down. And then whoever went long in the pre-market in these areas, their stops are probably right here, right here, or even right here. So I want to take advantage of the, their stops getting burnt and, and look for that momentum right to the downside. So I took that pre-market low short right there, enjoyed that right to the downside right into the uh, uh, yesterday's lows right here, covered some into yesterday's lows, or sorry, the after hour lows right there, held it for until the, 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 the turn started to show up and then I covered some, then I added back to my trade later on, sadly did not ride it all the way down, did not see this big move coming into the goddamn stock, I could have had added or gotten back into the trade multiple times in the day, but uh, I was waiting for the pullback into, into VWAP, but I guess if the stock was as weak as it was supposed to be, a VWAP pullback should have never been in the play, but overall, Beautiful short. Uh, I got the best that I could get out of it. Then I tried a long later on in the day. That long does end up working out. Let me point out to you. That long does end up working out slightly and the market just kind of stalls out and the market just closes. So DJT, I just end up closing that trade for a flat. Overall, my best trade on the day. But tomorrow, what do we expect from DJT? Are we getting another big move, another 15, 20%, day one, 18%, day two, uh, we're getting a 14.17%, day three, are we getting a, a, a 12 point? 0.6%, uh, so not really sure what to expect over here. Overall, the, 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 the momentum is to the downside, so the only thing we're going to be looking for is the failure for follow-through. This is a big range where DJT, or should I say DWAC back then, DWAC has been holding in, then the merger happens, the uh, uh, merger gets approved, the ticker symbol changes, the ticker goes a little crazy, and then back slap back to reality, to the right back to the downside. So after breaking this little consolidation for me i want to keep looking for that failure to follow through on any sort of pops off the open uh, on this position fail, failing to take away the the pre-market highs failing to uh, um, hold the pre-market lows allowing us to ride it to the downside once again so waiting to see how djt sets up tomorrow keep in mind though it will be on ssr day two it will be on SSR day two. That means it will be a little bit harder to short. Uh, uh, doesn't mean that it will be impossible. It will be a little bit harder. As you can see, it's not impossible because today was on SSR and it still brought in another 14% move to the downside. So DJT could very well go back to the $16, $11 area at the moment. The way it's trading, so be careful. Uh, wasn't Death Note for sure. De Death Note had a live action, did it not? 
I think it did. Stop flirting with us talking anime like that. I mean, listen, I'm just trying to get your number, Angry Buddha. I know you have a, a wonderful girlfriend that you'd love to spend your time with, but uh, I'm just trying to get your number, dude. Is that too much? Is that too upfront? Maybe that's, you know, it was a little too upfront. So that's why I had to kind of flirt with you. Flirt with you. Talk anime with you. Uh, talk stocks with you on Discord. So it kind of looks like I'm interested in that garbage. But really, I'm just trying to slide in your pants, Angry. That's all it is. <laughs> Death Note live action was trash. Okay, that's what I heard. I never watched it. I, 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 I'm I a big fan of Death Note. But uh, yeah, never, never watched the live action. I've heard that it was very trash. Very, very trash. It was upsetting, says Buddha. I, I, I will trust Buddha 100%. I will trust Buddha 100%. Ani, not the best judge of uh, anything, really, you know? She... I guess she is a good judge of one thing, of me, because she thinks that I'm a good person. So she was right off that, but Ani's just not a good judge of anything, really. She plays Diablo 4 till, like, 4 a.m. in the morning. Like, come on. <laughs> I'm trolling her. Uh, Death Note is my favorite all-time anime. If you're a fan, stay away. Death Note, favorite all-time anime? I think... I think that's a little too cliche. Like, everyone says that. I, I think, you know, Death Note was okay. It wasn't bad. It wasn't atrocious. It was good. But it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't belong in the top-level tiers for me. For me, like, the top tier... It's got to be Attack on Titan. Like, Attack on Titan was so good. What other animes have I watched? Hunter? Hunter x Hunter? Was it... Uh, Hunter x Hunter. I think that's how you say it. That was a good one. I've been liking the Netflix ones a lot. The Netflix one. Kenshin Ashura. Uh, Records of Ragnarok. And... Uh, Kenshin Ashura. Records of Ragnarok. Baki Hanma. These three are amazing. Netflix has been going off with those. Um, one Piece is great, but it just has too many episodes. So that one kind of gets a little annoying. The Last Airbender, obviously, you can't forget that. Dragon Ball Z, Pokemon, people don't even think of them as anime. They just think as uh, uh, cartoons, but they are anime. So, you know, I can go all day for anime. I got into sport anime for a bit. What the hell is that? Oh, sports anime. I, I, I see what you're saying. The basketball one. I got into the basketball one for a bit. Then I was like, oh, what the hell am I doing, bro? What am I even watching at the moment? I'm just going to turn this garbage off and I turn it. It's not garbage, but I just turned it off. I just couldn't watch it anymore. I said, enough with that. Done with that stuff. Uh, but I did watch some of the other episodes of... Uh, I'm just going to take a quick look at uh, Los Angeles Lakers scores. Come on, dude. You only have six points. Anthony Davis, I need 30 from you. It's halftime and you only have six. AD sleeping. Austin Reeves has one three. I should have taken D'Angelo Russell for three threes. God damn it. And LeBron has five assists. That's not bad. I need a lot more points and I'll need two more threes from you, Austin. Austin. Come on, Austin. But uh, coming back to our, our quick little anime talk over there, that that little the the, the Netflix has a show about a, a a yakuza gangster who quits being a gangster and becomes an amazing chef for his wife. That's a pretty good show over there. Netflix has some pretty good shows, honestly. Netflix has a lot of good anime. If you if you want to spend time just watching anime, Netflix has some really good shows. Blue Lock, great soccer. The volleyball one, I think I've watched that too. <laughs> Angry going full weeb mode. Weebs away. Weebs away. No, I'm joking. I'm a weeb. I'm a weeb. Let's get back to the market a little bit, shall we? After getting sidetracked every three stocks or every one stock, realistically, getting sidetracked after every single stock that we talk about. Let's get back to the market. J&J &J with the big move to the downside, taking out that 52-week low. That 52-week low actually gave you a good long at one point in the day. I was in that long and I got out of it. 
profitable trade for me was looking for a bigger trade right after the stock kind of started holding under the 52 week low got back above the 52 week low i started holding i got in long right there got out most of my size right into that pop and then my last few shares i got stopped out at break even but the stock really did nothing around the 52 week low later on in the day it looks a little bit weak it looks like it wants to go under it j and j had a good report but the overall Medicaid se se sector, not really too strong with their uh, own personal reasons. UNH had a monster report, actually almost gapped all the way back into the previous price point where the stock was at before the whole catalyst of uh, Medicare interest rates kind of problem kicked in and the Medicare uh, and UNH kind of dropped below over here. So gapping up and now we're looking to see on any sort of a pullback into this area if UNH can find some buying. And J&J, &J, we're waiting to see if J&J &J can find some buying also, right? above this 52 week low area or previous 52 week low i should say there is a new 52 week low in play now for j and j which is today's low does it actually reclaim this orange level and kind of start making a little bit of a reversal to uh, to emulate its partner in crime unh or is it going to completely get uh, sidetracked by itself and kind of you know continue making this downwards move over here on j and j so here's a trade idea for you guys keep a, keep the stock on the watch there could be a possible day two opportunity today pre-market was the earnings report tomorrow we're looking for a day two to continuation or a day two reversal some sort of an opportunity for us to put that money in the bank show me what you got i got money in the bank show me what you got all right is that how it goes i think that's how the lyrics goes i forget how the lyrics goes anyways doesn't matter morgan stanley not really a day two i think day three no day day two play today was the day two play was today earnings no right it was. No. Is today Wednesday? Today's Thursday? Tuesday? Tuesday. Oh, okay, so today was the earnings. Today was day one. Tomorrow, day two. So same thing as J&J. &J, wait and see if this one sells off. But sadly, as we have been seeing... Ooh. Excuse me. As sadly, as we have been seeing, J and uh, bank stocks have been getting absolutely slaughter-fested off their earnings report. JPM, big downwards day on day one, big down day on day two, but right into the day one's low. Day three, breaking their both low, perfect three-bar play over here on the daily chart, looking like it's going to crack even more to the downside on the swing scale. So if JP Morgan pulls back into the, the earnings day low right around, what is that low around at? uh what right around 182.50 to 183 which is today's high we're waiting to see if jp morgan could give us some shorts off of those levels so 182.50 slash 183 waiting to see what jp morgan does over there uh goldman sachs how are you looking uh kind of stuck in ranges almost like morgan stanley not really too exciting for me right these are these are boring these are boring jp morgan's a little bit more exciting so i think jp morgan will put that one on the watch although this one doesn't really have a playbook play tomorrow there's a day one play there's a day two play there's a day three play and day two and day three plays don't really kind of set up for stocks like uh, uh bank stocks or because a bank stock's not going to crumble you know 10 percent on, on a day just it's gonna be crazy if that if that happened but um there could be a little bit of continuation, but that means you don't hit it on a momentum basis. You don't take breakouts. You wait for pullbacks. Get in on pullbacks. You wait to see resistance on pullbacks. So wait to see how JP Morgan behaves over here. Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley kind of in this previous range is not too exciting, but this one is a little bit better than those two stocks, in my opinion. Bank of America is a little bit better than those two stocks at the moment. That's why Bank of America is in the watch list for any pullbacks. We're looking for shorts. ABT, the stock that reports earning tomorrow pre-market, along with asml so watching how they re react on their report the stock actually does decent volume never really traded this position before uh, a health technology medical specialties company don't know what they do but uh, i mean look at that chart that chart is amazing beautiful chart uh, almost into all-time high area we previously very not too long ago were into all-time highs but right now a little bit of a pullback looks like a gap down this could be on that very same day where una j and j cvx and everything gapped down and you're seeing that trickle effect pouring into abt but maybe this one does what unh does uh unh do, uh did this one does what UNH did, which is breaks out, gets above this high over here, and rips all the way back into this gap close or even more. Rips all the way back into this gap close or even more. So watching how ABT reacts, or it also does exactly like UNH does, 
goes a little bit higher and then starts pulling back to the downside at which point you can look for the short so abt for some sort of uh, a repetition trade off of unh looking to see if it can follow that idea but that's pretty much all she wrote for our earnings basket tomorrow uh besides this we have a lot of other stocks on our watch list but most of them are just kind of uh, uh secondary tertiary trade ideas ideas in case are our hot stocks of the day which i believe will give you trading opportunities these stocks actually have a catalyst behind them the market uh will be moving all the time but sometimes you need to trade stocks that have a catalyst the stocks that are in play as the smb guys say it so uh in play stocks are the ones that have news behind it a catalyst behind it uh, uh stocks that have a higher r vol or more volume than general and i think these will be our basket but besides that you will always have your go-to names that you love trading for me it's all of these ones such as dxyz djt reddit dxyz gave you a beautiful short today if i remember oh yesterday gave you a beautiful ten dollar short yesterday uh not so much today but i guess it did at one point yeah it did at one point forty five dollars to thirty five dollars almost but uh, waiting to see how dxyz sets up going into the next few days over here uh currently kind of relaxing above the ipo day high exactly what i want to see from dxyz if i want to be long on this position right so dxyz kind of settling above the ipo high which is perfect still waiting to see how the stock sets up once ip uh options kick on for this position we got mikey in the house what's up mikey almost didn't recognize you your name was green and so was angry buddhas and the way your name's uh, uh, lengths are your your characters and your name are almost similar so i thought you guys were the same person so i just kind of kept looking at the green and i thought no new messages come in came in uh a lot of single stocks looking for gap fills to the bottom indeed we were talking about that earlier double down on my course air po average po what the hell is po course air price offering average Pro put offering average I'm guessing you just mean price average uh, at 1226 way overweight wba i added also welds wa wall greens really corsair i understand walgreens that is scary this i'm not long i would not long this one at the moment especially with the whole medicare interest rates scare that's going on that's why all these stocks are flushing down unh even with their awesome report today pulled back quite back quite decently so i'd be i'd be careful for wba but corsair i understand corsair 100 i mean i i should have corsair products i don't wait i do my stream deck Corsair, Elgato, Corsair. I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure Stream Deck is Corsair. Is it not chat? Uh, uh, get in there. Get in there. A brokey. I broke my machine. I fixed it. Let's go. Let's go. Who owns Elgato? Yeah, Corsair. What else does Corsair own? Oh, there we go. Origin PC drop. What is drop? Okay. A headphones company. Never heard of them. Formerly Mass Drop. Okay. An Origin PC, I'm guessing it's some sort of a PC building. A yeah, PC assembling, high performance gaming company. Obviously, 
a lot of people have been doing that. Okay, not bad, not bad. Pretty good companies over there. Elgato probably makes them their most money. I mean, uh, their, their, their parts that they sell for computers probably make them a lot of money too. They sell amazing peripheral hardware for computers. But Elgato, every streamer in the world uses Elgato tools for streaming. Uh, if you're at least some sort of a real streamer. Now, I don't think I'm a real streamer because I don't have everything Elgato. Now, I'm joking. But I do have Stream Deck over here. But almost every real streamer out there uses Elgato products. They know about it. Their products cost a lot. And their products are beautiful. And uh, I, would, I would go long Corsair at $10 just for Elgato. Just for Elgato. Purely off of Elgato products. Because their products are, are that good. Scuff Gaming? They own Scuff Gaming? Really? Okay, Scuff Controllers are, are high demand, I remember that. Scuff, scuff Controllers are, are high demand controllers. Yeah, El Elgato, Corsair, okay. That's crazy, I didn't even know that. Another reason to, to invest in Corsair. Another reason to invest in Corsair. I, I love Corsair. I love this call out. I don't like that WBA call out. I'm not a fan of that one. <laughs> Let's go check out what Reddit's doing. Reddit kind of making a nice reversal, uh, uh, possible reversal over here back through that $40 area. But right now, volume is just 1 million shares. So Reddit almost becoming a, a nothing burger play for us. Coinbase, TH mentioned Coinbase earlier on the stream today. Big move on Coinbase yesterday, even bigger move to the downside on Coinbase today, but an even bigger reversal after making that low right off of the IPO anchored VWAP. That's insane. Actually, that anchored VWAP should not matter anymore. This anchored VWAP uh, is probably being overridden by some of the uh, uh, higher volume nodes, some as such as this one, this one, and this one. So it could be overtaken. It might not actually be using some of the older volume data as much as it, you, it should. But right now you're watching it. That's a pretty fun, fun way to look at it. It's bouncing off the earnings, uh, uh, sorry, IPO anchor VWAP at the moment on Coinbase after that big down move. Nice little double bottom into 206, 207 area and rocking right back into the day's high on Coinbase. Insane reversal. As, after I got short right here and I got stopped up on the move to 216, 217 and I didn't get to take a big move to 206 over there. So missed out a nice trade on coin. I'll be watching the sector tomorrow without a doubt, right? As long as Bitcoin having is very much a, a, a catalyst, you got to keep your eyes, uh, eyes, your eyes on the Bitcoin sector, BITO, IBIT, GBTC and all those fun names. So keep an eye on those stocks without a doubt. Apple. Apple had a nice move off the open, but failure to follow through stuffed it right back down into that, that beautiful consolidation area into 160. So uh, if you look at that orange line right there, go back into the five minute chart. You can see how we just double bottom right before that area. You can even call it a triple bottom, giving you multiple opportunities to scalp long from there and take that move to VWAP that you might be looking for. I was looking for that. I was long over here and I got out. Then I was long over here and then I got out right before the main meat of the move, sadly, because I was key. I kept getting debated. I kept getting faked out by the overall market. The market looked like it wanted to go down, so I would close my position on Apple. The market looked like it wanted to go up, and if Apple was near the lows, I would get in. So I just kept getting debated, debated, debated. I wasn't able to hold for the main meat of the move towards VWAP, but I was able able to take some quick scalps from the lows into the into the 21 EMA or so each time. So I'm happy. I'm not mad. But Apple, uh, uh, Microsoft, Google, Nvidia, Amazon, you got to watch all these stocks if you're trading the overall market. These are 50% of QQQ, 50% of the Nasdaq. So if you are if you're trading the Nasdaq, such as what I do a lot, I, I trade the QQQ, not the Nasdaq futures. I trade QQQ, I trade uh, uh, S&P 500, even the S&P 500 the magnificent seven is pretty much 40 50 percent of the market so you got to watch how these stocks are moving if if 
all the large large cap stocks are, are at all times are, are days high and they're taking out the days high but the market is kind of just not moving at all that could be because the rest of the stocks are absolutely getting plummeted and just dropped to the downside right so you want to watch the confluence you want to see if the large cap is kind of resonating with the with the main etfs which is resonating with the tick sector uh tick tick indicator and the add indicator and be able to form a thesis that if this market actually has a chance to move somewhere or is this market not moving anywhere and we were able to figure that out in our office because we saw stocks like amazon go doing this we saw stocks like google doing this we saw stocks like microsoft go to its day high go back to its day low go back to its day high go back to its day low so basically realize that the market just might not have any move today and we need to wait patiently for the the papa powell incident and papa powell incident comes into play and it does give us some volatility gives us a breakout long which we took on our floor and then it comes right back down and kind of gets stopped out on the last few shares after taking that beautiful scalp then it gives you an almost an opportunity to the short side too but never really uh, uh gets triggered to the downside sadly but overall some volatility over here papa powell and and uh the the canadian finance minister or something like that we're talking to each other on the conference on this on the microphones and so on and they were moving the market quite a bit with their dovish statements very very dovish tif who the hell is that the fuck is tiff tiff it's the man No, don't add this page to to the goddamn bookmark. What the hell? He was talking to Can Finance Manager. Yeah, Canadian Finance Manager, indeed. Indeed, manager, 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 indeed. Yeah, 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 yeah. I thought it was Finance Minister, Manager, Manager, Manager. Thank you. Moving the market, but not really because the market did nothing. Market did nothing. It said, Papa Powell basically said, fuck your puts, fuck your calls, I got you by the balls. It, it burned the stops to the downside, it burned the stops to the upside, did nothing, chopped around, barcode. Meh. So, yeah, that was a market, sadly. But we'll see if it does something fun tomorrow. If it wakes up tomorrow, goes back higher. We got, like I mentioned, we got a nice little uh, two bar play on the daily chart coming in. If that two bar can break and go to the downside, much more room down. But if the two bar holds and we pull back up over here, then there is a little bit of room to the upside that we can play with, especially if we can reclaim the last week high and see some, sorry, last week low and see some buying above last week's low on QQQ and SPY. SPY, a little bit weaker than the QQQ. Uh, SPY down 0.18%, IWM down 0.3%, QQQ up 0.01%. You might as well just say flat. Might as well just say flat. Uh, tomorrow's economic calendar, more IMF meetings. We do have the crude oil inventories every Wednesdays at 1030. You guys know that for the most part, especially if you're trading oil stocks or, or crude futures, you might want to be watching this. And, and with the everything war going on right now, uh, uh, USO, gold, all that fun stuff are, are going up. Today, uranium, uh, something with uranium was happening today. If you guys know what's going on over there, please educate me. Uranium was... Uh, I guess Russia came in and sanctioned uranium or something. So a lot of uranium ETFs such as URA and, and uh, BMF, BFM. B. BHP, we got it. We finally got it. 
BHP. So a lot of uh, mineral-based companies all got stuffed down off of some Russian sanction or whatever. So possible catalyst over there. However, URA, uh, after that big sell-off sell off, off the open, recovered and pulled right back up. Uh, um, so w something over here to keep an eye out for. Obviously, gold, uh, uh, silver... Uh, oil all on play, especially if the war craziness keeps on escalating the way it is. So make sure you're watching these ones. And at 10.30 tomorrow, you got the oil inventory. So that's obviously a pretty good number to keep an eye out for if you're watching these uh, oil-based stocks and so on. Tomorrow, we also have the 20-year bond auction at 1 o'clock. The 20-year, the 30-year are a little bit more important than the 2-week, 5-week, 3-week, and the 3-month, the, the 5-month, and so on. So the longer time period, a little bit more important than the 20-year bond auction coming in at one o'clock watch how the market might move or react off of that the beige book at two o'clock that could also move the market a little bit besides that nothing really that we need to watch out for thankfully no more papa powell on the microphone or any other uh, person during the market hours there are two fed members later on but markets closed by then so i don't really care about it but you guys might if you're trading futures such as uh, doom lord if you're trading futures you might care about that so uh, uh that one's at 17 30 so 5.30 p.m. and then 6.30 p.m. Uh, uh, Bowen is coming up at 6.30 p.m. on the microphone. So you might want to be watching how the overnight markets futures move at that time for yourselves. But for ourselves, we only care about that 10.30 time really and, and the 1 o'clock and the 2 o'clock. Nothing else on the board over here. Looks pretty exciting for us for the market. And we might just have to rely on the stocks that are reporting earnings tomorrow, which I think should help move the market overall. ASML is going to move a lot of semiconductor stocks especially nvidia and amd and i think that will give us some sort of a uh, sector trade on soxx smh soxl soxs whatever your instrument you choose to put some damage onto just make sure you don't get damaged on did that make sense hopefully all right uh we're gonna head over to evan's post about wednesday so wednesday uh earnings we talked about some of them uh abt we talked about that not really about usb i'm done with trading too many banks over here screw this we got vinfast for those of you who remember las vegas sands announcing earnings report after hours so you might be interested over there for, to see how these stocks move we will be talking about them tomorrow eight o'clock so make sure you show up to the stream if you're interested to see how lvs moves or what type of trade opportunities lvs that stuff for uh volkswagen workers at the automakers plant in chattanooga tennessee will hold a three-day vote on joining the united auto workers union that's gonna obviously get voted as a yes that's gonna obviously get voted as a yes that's there's no way that's gonna not get voted as a yes the federal reserve re releases beige book we saw that one it's not all day it's two o'clock uh, a Senate com submit committee hearing will feature testimony from Boeing CEO David Engineer Sam blah 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 is expected to detail safety concerns involving the manufacturing and assembly of the 787 Dreamliner. Shares of Boeing are down 33% on year to date basis. That is interesting. Guess what stock just got added to our watch list? Boeing is now on the watch list, ladies and gentlemen, because if he's having a testimony tomorrow, based on what he says, could move the stock quite a bit. No, not BAC. $4.34 ATR for Boeing. So pretty interesting to see how Boeing moves tomorrow. Glad that we read this report. See, this is why we read reports like this. Sometimes we don't know everything. Well, a lot of times we don't know everything. Only thing I know is I know nothing. Period. I know absolutely zilch. Uh, shareholders of... Not saying that... KAMN uh, will, will vote on 1.8 billion bio offer from Arcline. Oh, that's pretty interesting. Okay, pretty interesting over there. Green Power Motor GP will hold a webinar to share insight into the company's strategic positioning and growth trajectory. Uh, Cleveland Federal Reserve Bank President Loretta Mester will give an update on the federal on the Fed before South Franklin Circle Dialogue Series. Not sure how important that is to us, but whatever that is, maybe you might want to watch that. It's after hours anyways. I don't really care about it. But tomorrow, Boeing is the important one that we should really care about because they're going to be having a testimony uh, and uh, uh, they're going to be talking about the, the manufacturing problems and so on. So depending on what they say, we might or depending on how the questions that they get asked, 
will also be very very fun over there because sometimes the questions that they say in these and this uh, senates are, are absolutely stupid but that's when that's when they're talking about technology and, and social media because some of these boomers have no clue how technology clearly works them they're the questions that comes out of their mouths are hilarious but when it talks when they're talking about boeing and so on we'll see what type of questions they'll, they'll be asking them so pretty interesting for for tomorrow hopefully the market moves that's the only thing we ask every day move market move Move, bitch. Get out the way. Get out the way, bitch. Get out the way. All right. Let's see if we got some movie time here. Ooh, we do. 36-minute video. How to time exact entries and exits bar by bar analysis. Now, that is very awesome. 36 minutes, though. Hi, I'm Justin Spiro, trader here at SMB Capital. In this, In this video, video break. do you guys hear the echo coming through the microphone when I'm listening to the 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 video on, on loudspeaker yes ah fine fine for Sarah headphones actually could be who owns HyperX? It actually could be Corsair. Actually, no. I think HyperX got bought out by... By Dell? HP. They got bought out by HP. I remember, I remember they got bought out. I just don't remember by who. Yeah, HyperX owned by HP. The microphone's HyperX too. The microphone's HyperX. It's actually this one right here, but it's just not RGB. It's just, just pure red. That's it. I actually wanted to buy... Who makes Steel Series? Is Steel Series by themselves? Of who? Subsidiary of who? GN Store Nord. What the hell is that? Ticker GN? Oh, they own Jabra headphones? Oh. Hearing aid? Oh, these guys are like... Real, real... Headphone company and they bought out Steel Steer. That's actually really good. Usually these headphones companies just get acquired by like bullshit companies like Logitech and they don't get they don't care about these headphone companies. They only want to acquire them to have them on their portfolio. Uh, like HP acquiring acquiring uh, HyperX. I honestly believe that's bad for HyperX. Right, the same way when when Alienware got bought out by Dell, it was so bad for Alienware. It was it was garbage, but now Alienware actually picked up their game and they're doing a lot better. Uh, but Steel Series getting bought out by actually a company that manages headphones and so on is actually really good. I I wanted to buy Steel Series headphones, the Bluetooth one, the Arctic Pros, if I remember correctly, but they they were just way too expensive back in the day for me. So I bought my nice little. HyperX, which I guess was the same price, maybe a little bit less, maybe a hundred bucks less, and I and I I'm glad I did that. Only problem is this is wired. Only problem is this is wired. Yeah, GN Store Nord EORFL. Just get a Razer. Razer is the worst company in, in in gaming peripherals there ever can be. I've had a a Razer keyboard, sucks, absolute trash. This this. Keychron. Well, I guess I was gonna say like I can't I can't change any of the scenes if I don't have my keyboard plugged in. But this Keychron over here works ten times better than that piece of shit. Where is that piece of shit? Did I throw it out? Then that piece of shit keyboard. Oh, you know what? I actually do have a Corsair keyboard. I have a Corsair keyboard in that box over there that you probably can't see. I do have Corsair products, baby. I told you. I like Corsair. I do like Corsair. Give it to the chat. Yeah. Fuck Razer. Razer sucks. Their mice might be good. 
But everything else about Razer is just overhyped dog shit piece of garbage. All right. Now that I've ripped ripped that company apart, let's go watch this YouTube video, chat. Break down my entries and exits bar by bar and teach you how to time your trades just like the traders on our desk. Welcome back to the bar by bar series. After receiving numerous requests to bring these videos back, the time's finally come. Let's jump right into it. Here are just a few things you'll learn in this video. One, high probability mean reversion trades using two day VWAP on both the short and the long side. Two, how to analyze and execute. There one, is one, no way on trades. earth you sit with that much light on your forehead. There is a spotlight somewhere above his head right here to, to, <laughs> to light him up. There is no way on earth you're sitting there with that much light on your head. Using two day VWAP on both the short and the long side. Two, how to analyze and execute market trades using spy and tick during geopolitical events that are moving the market. Three, how do I identify no, and I have noise canceling headphones. You know that, headphones. right? And my Sony headphones are noise canceling headphones. Stupid. And these are Dolby 7.1 sound surround. Surround sound. Surround sound. Surround sound. Surround sound. Surround sound. Surround sound. So first, we're going to get started talking about ACB, which is a marijuana stock. Um, there's been a lot of catalysts. Know who you're talking to, girl. Uh, you play the app Diablo, okay? Go play your children's US. controller um, game. I play a real men's German game Castle that requires Castle. real keyboards, that requires that real uh, uh, headphones and, and real um, peripherals, so we see that it's okay? This Come on, kid. From there, Don't fight me here. Go play your controller games. Go play Mario Kart. moving average, which is this yellow line here, acting as resistance. When we're looking at a daily chart, everyone should be looking at these simple moving averages. The 200, the 100, the 50, 20. He's talking way too fast. Law to legalize cannabis. So first, we're going to get started talking about ACB, which is a marijuana stock. Um, there's been a lot of catalysts driving the marijuana stocks as of late, uh, which include pressure on the DEA to expedite its decision to reschedule marijuana in the U.S. On the 22nd, where you see this volume come in, Germany passed the law to legalize cannabis. And you can also see that ACB breaks above the 100-day moving average here. It hasn't done that um, since early September. So we see that it's starting to break this downtrend and we see volume start to come in. From there, ACB is kind of just in this consolidation between $5 and $4. But interestingly enough, we also have the 200-day moving average, which is this yellow line here, acting as resistance. When we're looking at a daily chart, everyone should be looking at these simple moving averages. The 200, the 100, the 50, 20, 10, and 5. Huh? 200 acting as support and the 200 acting as resistance and we're seeing volume start to flow into ACB that's the so first many in september on april 3rd on this breakout here there's some news that the cannabis council of canada has a new president who is an executive at cgc which is another publicly traded marijuana stock um and he also did some political work and apparently he was going to be great for the industry uh, which causes this breakout above the 200 day moving average and above five dollars and in addition to that here's another big piece of the puzzle ACB has 26% short interest, meaning that 26% of the tradable float is short. That is a huge amount of short interest for a stock. Anything over like 10, 15%, we consider a lot. Given that catalyst that really broke out ACB above the 200 day, um, you might be asking yourself like, why trade ACB rather than CGC? Given that the news was based around the former CGC CEO taking this position. And that's simply because ACB has a much cleaner setup. You know, if this is CGC, um, yeah, it's moving up with volume, but I really think the setup in ACB is much cleaner. And you can see that nice tight consolidation and the 200 acting as resistance. So, let's and that's why we picked JPM now, instead of Morgan Stanley and Goldman Sachs. Goldman but Sucks for tomorrow. The most money on the second day. It's cleaner. The third day this cleaner setup. I would challenge you all to go back and. They could do the same thing and sell off. Breakout. But now, JP Morgan nice is a cleaner Redbird setup. As it holds way above VWAP here, um, you have the break of highs midday that leads to this nice trend higher. Uh, and you can see on this day, we topped out at $7.39. Going into day two of this breakout, I want to look for a pullback to two-day VWAP. Now, two-day VWAP could be looked at where could be looked at as where the average buyer and seller was from the previous day. Uh, and it's a very powerful level that we like to trade against here at SMB. Uh, and that's simply where VWAP flattens out in the after hours. That's your two-day VWAP. Aw, little baby and got hurt because I made fun of Mario Kart. Car. Or there's a big blow off that triggers a back. Yo, baby Arnie. Uh, really important level to be watching after those two things happen. So, coming into the morning, um, we do. We get this pullback back into two day VWAP. And what's really interesting is, and what triggers this trade is this volume. He's talking about two day VWAP chat. Listen. So you can see off the open, there's some profit taking. It's moving lower. Um, and this candle is very interesting to me. So, initially, this candle opens up as a red candle, dips below that two day VWAP. 
and immediately rebids and goes green and forms this nice wick. I would call this like a reversal candle. And you see that nice volume that comes in there. Oh, he has a dotted line that, from the I'm 2 buying this, gotcha. And my stop is simply a few cents below low of day. In addition, this candle closes above the previous bar's high, breaking this initial downtrend in the morning. This is a great long for a mean reversion long after a second after a day one breakout on extremely high volume. You want to look to buy dips into potential support levels, and this bar here really triggered that for me. So as I enter the position, I notice that we are popping into VWAP, and normally for a mean reversion trade like this, I would begin to scale out of some and take profits into VWAP just in case that VWAP acts as resistance. However, we effortlessly push right through VWAP on the second highest volume bar of the day. Um, and I opt to, rather than take profits, I'm going to hold this position as I see that momentum coming in on the time and sales. We break back over VWAP, we break back over the 9 EMA, which is this blue line here, and we cross right over the 21 EMA. And now I'm noticing that that momentum is really coming in. We're starting to see that flood of green prints, and it looks totally different than what we saw in the morning. Um, there's a complete change in character on the tape that leads to this squeeze out above the opening price. So we have the stock going green on the day. And it also breaks above the previous day's high here that you see at $7.39. We start to blow off on pretty high volume. We now have the second highest blow volume off. of the morning. Hey, we yo. That move and we form this little wick here, um, and I start to take profits on the position. But what I'm thinking is that shorts from the morning who are piling in this, thinking that, okay, yesterday was a really big move. Um, this news is not that important. They're going to start to get squeezed out. In addition, I know that short interest is 26% on this. So now that we're above the day one high, this move really has the chance to follow through and make new highs. In addition, at this point, what I'm noticing is that the volume is extremely high and it's on track to surpass the prior day's volume, which leads me to believe, again, that this could really continue to squeeze. From there, we get a pullback into VWAP, we bounce, reclaim VWAP, reclaim the 9 and 21 EMA, and begin to consolidate at the top of that range. Uh, at this point, what I feel like... Nice little flag breakout over there. ...low of day to just below this higher low. Now that the stock reclaimed VWAP, we're getting confirmation, that the Later, Mikey. The Thanks for hanging out, brother. VWAP. Have a good night. I want to protect the profits on this trade, and I feel like this higher low is a great stop. From there, I add back what I sold on this move as we break to new highs. And then from there, you get this really nice trend that breaks through the pre-market high. And if we zoom out, we can take a look at that. Pre-market high at $8, and we break that effortlessly. No resistance at that pre-market high, which tells me that shorts are starting to panic. We break above $8, begin to hold, and this trend from the lows starts to break. We can draw that trend line there. We start to hold back below the pre-market high and eight dollars um and i sell this long position it's a good reason to get out day, and also i just want to point out that uh, that blow off on volume which you see here highlighted in yellow we get the highest volume bar of the day at 1025 above the pre-market high breaks back below the 90 ma begins to hold back below eight dollars breaks this downtrend it's just a really nice spot to take profits i feel like we yeah. have an overwhelming amount of checks in favor at that point to take profits on this position acb does a great reason to get out i like it and makes a new high what's interesting about this is if we zoom out from the two minutes to the one minute you can see that this is clearly a blow off. Now we have the highest volume bar of the day. Is um, this TC2000 or something? What, what app charting app is this? And it closes at the bottom 20% of the intraday range, below VWAP, below the opening price. And this signals to me that the backside is in. So going into the second day of the backside trade, uh, I'm looking for a short now. Since my backside criteria is met, given the blow off and the close at the bottom 20% of the range, below VWAP, red on the day, I don't want to be chasing into down moves on the second day. Since I have conviction that the backside is in, what I want to do is I want to look for pops into resistance levels and turn off and turns off. Angry you heading out too later, brother. In the morning, my game plan is to short a pop into two-day VWAP and add into the turn. And you can see where the VWAP flattens out. That's your two-day VWAP, and it's right around $7.70. Off the open, we get this clean trend higher into $7.70, and then we get the highest volume bar of the morning at $9.35. Typically, you know, we'll see the highest volume. Congratulations on your promotion, day, Angry. Open, Chief nine, Education nine, Officer, nine, CEO, CEO of the um, Trader Pride firm. Failure, can't even quite <laughs> test that two-day VWAP and begins to fail. As it turns, I'm starting to short this. As it breaks this uptrend, defined as breaking the prior bars low, which hasn't happened the whole morning, that's confirmation for me to add to my position. At this point, uh, it's pretty safe to put your stop at high of day. Uh, after this blow off and turn and break of this one minute trend, uh, this should follow through to the downside. Typically for a trade like this, I would start to cover a little bit into VWAP as it confirms. But in this instance, it slices right through VWAP effortlessly. And really, that's a sign for me that this trade is working perfectly. It's not trying to hold VWAP. It's not trying to bounce from VWAP. It's slicing right through on high volume. And in addition to that, after that move, it begins to retest and fail from VWAP. So after VWAP fails, um, the stock can't get back above VWAP. It starts to roll towards low of day. 
Um, and as we come into lows, let I me guess, he's getting short this, right here or price. here? I guess right um, here. However, I have a great price. I'm extremely confident now that this stock is rolled red, failed from two-day VWAP, sliced through VWAP effortlessly, that this could continue to roll over. So since the failure from two-day VWAP, we get our first bounce. It can't even quite test VWAP. It is getting back over to 9 and 21 EMA, but that's not a concern to me. Um, this is a bigger picture short after it blew off the prior day on huge volume. Uh, and I expect this trade to at least test the prior day's low down at 646. We fail to retrace to VWAP. We start to trade lower. We're holding back below the 9 EMA. And as we trade into the previous day's low, we start to hold. I'm being patient with this, and I'm watching to see if it's going to fall through to the downside or start to break back above this 9 EMA. Uh, and what we end up with is a save at the prior day's low. You can see that volume come in. Either there's buyers willing to step in there or there's shorts beginning to cover at the prior day's low. We're still holding below the 9 EMA, so I feel fairly confident about it. And as we make a new low, that new low fails to follow through, uh, and we hold back over. Josh heading out also. Everyone's leaving me. Good night, brother. We simply Keep embarrassing to yourself, I'm says Ani. Pretty sure uh, and this is a trade to you're hold upset bigger short -term that I hurt your feelings. Stock makes a new low, and you know what? I will apologize for it. I don't mean to hurt your feelings. Tries to make another new low here, and there's no follow through. It makes a new low by a few cents, and you can see that volume beginning to step in. At the same time, starting to break back above that 9 and 21 EMA. It retests yesterday's low, trying to be patient with it. And then it breaks back above and I that's a lie i fully range. meant to hurt your feelings so, but now i just feel bad all momentum day traders should be watching that two-day VWAP, especially after a big day one move on high volume and especially after a big blow off and backside that two-day VWAP is extreme an extremely strong level to trade off of after each of those scenarios so now we'll go over his trade uh, in spy that took place on friday april 12th uh, for market trade like i don't this, got feelings to spare for projects, you and i really want to walk everyone really on april 10th which was a wednesday we had cpi cpi came in one tenth higher than expected across the board bring the in the third month in a row where cpi came first, in hotter than expected what do you call that also, person who who gets called in at a at a court case not victim Bring in the first. Damn it! What do you call that? Were you were you asked the guys the question? Damn it! And I'm gonna have to mute my stream real quick. That's what it is. Witness. I had to watch a YouTube video quick on, on stream so I don't get DMCA'd. Witness. Bring in the first witness. And for my first witness on the stand, I will use Discord chat proof. No, I'm joking. That's mean. That's mean. That's mean, Pratt. You can't be bringing in private conversations like that, Pratt. And all of this sounds really bad, but fact of the matter is, the market fails to take out that pre-market low at 512 and just chops for the remainder of the CPI day. If this was going to be a true trend day, we would have taken out that pre-market low really in the first hour of trade, and we were not able to do that. Uh, the market. Just hey, that's almost like uh, what I was talking about in in uh, uh, for DJT, right? Double bottom, DJT pre-market. If it was strong enough, it should not take out that bottom. And kind of start going higher. But if it was weak enough, that bottom should break. The stops over here should trigger and we should go lower. It's kind of the opposite over here for the spy. Stops around into the next day, which was PPI. So PPI Did you like released, delete all the uh, conversations and just block me or something? <laughs> year over year, it is one tenth cooler than expected. Um, PPI is also Oops. the Fed's preferred inflation gauge. And you can see when that number is released, we retest that 512 area. No. And bounce from it. Off the open, spy retests that 512 again. So now we have a really clear level Damn. to trade against. Um, for me, moving forward, that 512 area is the line in the sand. If we were holding below 512, the market could really break down. Um, and I would call that 512 level um, a line in the sand. I need 20 points from Anthony Davis, dude. So we retest that 512 20 morning, points. and we rip higher into the close. Now, I feel that a lot of participants have FOMO, and they're chasing this grind higher into the close with the idea that, hey, um, maybe the market doesn't care about inflation as much as we thought it did. Given all that negative news that we talked about and the chances of a June rate cut going from 60% to 28%, uh, it's just really interesting that the market couldn't break down on that and we have this strong trend. So really, the chase is on. Uh, and, and people have FOMO thinking that they're gonna miss the next leg higher in the market. Uh, and this sets up the trade for April 12th. So you can see in the pre-market here, um, the market opens up pretty much unchanged in the pre-market and then we begin to grind lower. So early in the morning around 6 a.m., the Wall Street Journal reported that 
there's going to be a potential retaliatory attack from Iran and not a proxy group, which would be a pretty major escalation in the Middle East. And from there, it seemed like there was a new headline about this every five minutes. That yeah, she deleted it, man. She deleted all the conversations. The Look at her. To drift lower in the pre-market. And <laughs> she she did not. And all of that afternoon move going into the open. Given the prior day strength, we could really hypothesize that a lot of those longs that were chasing this move, having FOMO, scared that they're going to miss the second leg higher, they're going to start to be pretty nervous about this. In addition, going into the weekend with that potential war escalating in the Middle East, why would short-term traders want to hold stocks long over the weekend? All of that gets me started to think about a potential short in the market. Let's dive into the trade, and we're going to pull up the tick index. So on a day where the market is in play, you're definitely going to want to watch the tick. Every day I'm watching the tick become, becomes much more important when the overall market is in play from a geopolitical event like this. Off the, off the open, the market attempts to bounce, and you can see that the tick opens up around negative 500 and attempts to trade above zero, and that move fails. This tells us that um, breath is weak on this bounce. There's bearish sentiment. There's a lack of a potential reversal from this move. The big money is scared to push stocks higher. Um, there's just a ton of bearish sentiment. In addition, if we look at the advanced decline line, we can see that the advanced decline opens up at negative 1,000, attempts to bounce, stays negative, and rolls over and begins to make new lows. SPY attempts to take out that pre-market low at 513.45, bounces into the 90 MA, fails, and takes out that pre-market low and low of day on volume. In addition, you can see that this bounce um, coincides with the 90 MA, fails from the 90 MA, but also fails from the opening price. So now SPY is showing us that it's trying to go green on the day, it's trying to bounce, and it can't. And this results in a really nice momentum short down to that key 512 area. However, the big trade for me how many Came things you have marked out? Pre-market so low, from that S as in support, support daily level support, 50-day SMA, opening price. What's interesting is as we retest VWAP, we put in the highest tick of the day. But he has the lines out the wazoo. We fail from VWAP, I like it though. Starting to short. Given that this is a bigger picture trade for I like it. I think we can see a sell-off into the weekend based on this news. And as this trade's developing, these, new, these, these news headlines about the imminent attack are pouring in. There are sirens going off in Israel. Um, and the news is just getting, it's becoming more clear that this attack is going to happen. We fail from VWAP and I'm taking a short. This is a very popular trade after a strong downtrend in the morning. After a pop into VWAP, we call that a VWAP continuation. I'm taking a short here. And given that this is a bigger picture trade idea or for me a trade to hold, I want to give this room to work. And I'm thinking that uh, I'm going to stop out of this trade if SPY reclaims the opening price at 514.40 and holds above the opening price and holds above VWAP. Um, that shouldn't happen if this is going to be a truly negative catalyst and SPY is going to trend into the close. We pop and fail into VWAP again, this time on a much lower tick. In addition to that, SPY begins to break the short-term downtrend from 512, and I start to feel pretty confident about this trade. From there, we roll over and we break lows on a thousand tick. This is our first thousand tick of the day, um, and that tells me the market is getting short-term oversold. And for me, it's smart to ring the register into something like that. We got a very clear failure from VWAP, we broke that uptrend, and we got a perfect trend down, and momentum started to come in as we break that low of day, and we're seeing that negative thousand tick, um, telling us that the market is short-term oversold. And I want to begin to cover some of my position into that and ring the register. From that first negative 1,000 tick of the day, we get a pop into zero on the tick. And from a negative 1,000 to zero, we could see that the market could barely bounce. And that 9 EMA is becoming resistance. And as we break to new lows, I'm adding that momentum short. I like back. it, man. So this video is amazing. Back, simply adding it back you guys need to save this video, this watch this video later to on. Start to consolidate. This video is amazing. The 50-day simple moving average is right in this area at 510.06. For me, the momentum is slowing down. Uh, the market's beginning to consolidate. We tap that 50-day SMA to the tick. We begin to bounce and break back above the 9 EMA. And I am ringing the register and covering that momentum ad here. And I'm left with a core position. I gotta also, share what it. I gotta mention is as we break I gotta here, share I'm it with my friends. For me to keep my stop above the opening price at 514.40. At this point, I'm thinking that this should not trade back over VWAP. This should not take out this double top into VWAP. And I'm simply adjusting my stop a few cents below this wick high here into VWAP. So my stop becomes just a little bit over 514. So oh my God, I completely the forgot the actual video I wanted to watch today. This was the video I actually wanted to watch today. This is a 15 minute long video. Okay, we have this one saved for tomorrow. Let's finish this one up. It's pretty trade. There's no way that I could lose on this trade. And now I have a core position from great prices. And I really want to give this a chance to trend into the close. So I'm being patient with the trade. The market makes a new low, reclaims that 50, retests that 50 and bounces from it. So essentially what we have now is a low, a higher low, and we're bouncing from that 50. And now I'm going to take profits on my core position and I'm left with half of that core. In case during power hour, which we would call the last hour of the day from three to four, volume typically begins flowing back into the market. And we see that we're able to break that 50. Volume starts coming in the last 20 minutes or so. You see that increase in volume. We put in another higher low after a failed follow through new low. So the market makes a new low. We can't follow through to the downside. We put in a higher low and reclaim the 50 day. Uh, and I cover the remainder of my position. So the next trade that we're going to go over is in TPET. Oh, I'm so interested. As the conflict between Iran and Israel begins to heat up, it's a smart idea to go back and look at what stocks you traded 
um, when that conflict all started in the Middle East between Israel and Hamas. Uh, and I could see that TPET was one of those stocks that I traded back in October um, as Israel was gearing up to- Prad, great show. See you tomorrow. Uh, Thank you, John, for coming out, for hanging out for the past hour and a half. I know it gets late. I know my stream times are awkward. I appreciate the love. I appreciate the support. Thank you for always hitting the like and subscribe. I know you do it all the time, and I love you for it, John. Thank you, brother. Have a good night. Have an even better trading session tomorrow. I can't wait to see you tomorrow, 8 o'clock. Get some rest. Good night, sir. Friday, uh, I'm sorry, Thursday off the open, it retested 30 cents. Given the news flow, I really wanted to buy this over 30 cents. So just had my alert set on TPET at 30 cents. And I noticed that as we cross over 30 cents, volume begins to come in. Um, it fails from 30 cents and it pulls back. Now around 11 o'clock, we break above the pre-market high at 32 cents and volume starts to come in. I bought this as it broke higher above 32 cents. So you can see it gets above 32, it holds 32, it dips back into the 90 EMA, reclaims 32, and volume begins to come in. Uh, I'm buying this and I'm willing to accept the risk to low of day. If this stock makes a new low after this volume comes in, it's gonna be a clear failure for me and I'm willing to accept that risk on this stock. In addition, it's only a 26 million share float and we have a very clear resistance level to work with, right? Uh, it fails from 30 cents, begins to hold over 30 cents, and then we see that big volume come in over the pre-market high. Um, and to put that volume into perspective, if we zoom out a little bit, um, you can see that that's the highest two minute volume bar since this move started. And in addition, that volume, it sustains. We're getting consecutive 2 million, 3 million, 4 million share volume bars. Um, and this is telling me that this could really squeeze, especially as we're getting confirmation uh, via the news and the headlines that are coming in that the attack is imminent. This is an oil stock. You know, if the war escalates in the Middle East, at least in the short term, oil is definitely gonna spike. And we got proof that this stock could run based on what happened back in October. I'm willing to accept that risk of low of day. And I really want to be patient and wait for this trade to play out. So you can see that we're holding over 32 cents, that volume is sustaining, and we're holding well above VWAP. Um, there's so much buying that this stock can't even pull back and retest VWAP and it continues to consolidate. Um, it attempts to make a new high here on volume, uh, makes a new high by about a cent, pulls back, uh, but really there's nothing wrong with this. I'm not buying this 32 cent breakout of pre-market high for a seven cent move. I really wanna be patient with this uh, in case it really starts to squeeze and we get a move like we saw back in October when this whole conflict in the Middle East really kicked off. So you can see that the stock begins to hold the nine and 21 EMA, no problem. You know, makes a new high, fails to follow through, but it's still- holding I like this guy. This guy has been amazing. This video is great. Before volume comes in over 50 cents and the stock begins to go vertical. Uh, as it trades above 50 cents into this 60 cents- This video is starting to great. As this goes vertical, um, you can see a little bit of a blow off here above 60 cents. In addition, I'm taking profits into this move. It pulls back to the 90 EMA, makes another new high into 70 cents, and I'm taking profits. This is a momentum trade. Um, and as it begins to get vertical, I wanna be scaling out. Now, when you're trading a stock like this, you wanna look for those signs that we talked about and you don't wanna be buying this as it goes vertical. That's where you should be selling. So you should be looking for those subtle signs like, okay, um, stock puts in a low at 26 cents, puts in a higher low at 27 cents, volume starts to come in as it tests 30 cents, it begins holding over 30 cents. These are all checks in favor that are alluding to a potential big move in this stock. And we have the news and the catalyst in the market to support this trade. And again, I can't stress enough, we know what happened back in October. I wanna look for a move like that. This isn't a trade where I wanna scale out five or, or 10 cents. I wanna wait for this stock to go parabolic to start selling into. You don't wanna be the person that's chasing this up at 60 cents. You wanna look for those subtle signs. Following that, we get a little bit of a blow off on volume into this move. The stock puts in a higher low and a lower low. And for me, the trade is over. Um, I think I did end up holding about 15 to 20% of the position just to see what would happen into the close. But I was scaling out of the majority into this move about 50 cents and 60 cents and definitely into 70 cents. Um, and also just quickly, if we mark off this 70 cent level and zoom back out to the daily. Um, you can see that this was resistance in October uh, and it's smart to scale out into that move as the stock goes vertical. And that was, the, that was the high. <laughs> it pulled back pretty drastically from that high later on. Yeah, I mean, that's this video is amazing. I'm going to have to, I already saved it in my in my trading watch list, which is private. I'm not going to tell you what's in there. But a very interesting video. I'm going to have to watch this video again later on uh, for a secondary refresher. I loved it. I love this video, the way he explained how he enters, what he's looking for, what, he's, uh, what he wants to see from the stock, what he wants to see from the market, uh, how he's uh, uh, using other indicators, other variables to help him exit trades for a profitable win, how his mind even... Uh, was set up going into the trade and so on, creating the trade idea itself to begin with, all of that explained beautifully in this video. So I would urge you guys to go check it out. SMB Capital never misses with the content. Never misses with the content. Go check them out. But talking about content, here's my time of the day to give you some content. Ah, the most stressful part of my day.
The most stressful part of my day. Okay, who's who's moving? Black's moving? Easy. Black's moving? White's moving. Why is that bad? He can't kill that. I got that right there. Oh, but he can take that. Okay. Okay. Where in the fuck? I honestly don't know what to do here. the queen oh cuz that can cover that I didn't look at it like that but then why can't I put it here oh I didn't see that boy I didn't see that bad boy there I messed up I messed up chat I didn't see that guy there Okay, next, why to move? Easy. Black to move. No? Oh shit, okay. Yeah, fair, that makes sense. That makes sense. I'm I'm slowing down though. My 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 rate curve is now kind of flattening out. I'm kind I'm kinda of stuck at 800 apparently. Heart stuck 800. Yikes. Did I just win that game? Automatically? Oh no, we just started a game. Yes, Dider. Dider with the banger music, bro. Wait, do I do this? Yeah, fuck it. What was that for, Chief? And now you lose your horse. The only defense he had. And then you lose this too. Yeah, that's what I thought.
What's up, angry? What happened? Why are you dotting me? Why are you dotting me, dude? I don't understand this guy's game plan. Brazil! Brasilia! Brasilia! Think I'm stupid, buddy? Bring that horse here so I could take that bumble clot. Bring your puss bumble club on here, man. You're stupid. You're a idiot. You're a fucking moron. Back that horsey up, man. Back that bumble club horse up. That's the only place you can go. Really, buddy? Now you lose either or. What's more important to you? You fucking moron. Really, buddy? Oh, I could have used him to take him? Wait, wait, where, where was he? No, I, I can't, I couldn't have. Really, buddy? You still you lose a piece here. You fucking idiot. You guys are a fucking moron, dude. I don't know what his goal is. What is his game plan? What is this guy's game plan? This game plan is so whack. Are you really gonna win with two horse, two rooks, and a, that's it? Like you, you really think you're gonna win with that, guys? I win this game, chat. Trust me, I win this game. I got it in the bag. I'm not getting cocky. I just know I got it in my bag. Okay, maybe I don't. Okay, buddy, turn the engines on on this game.
Buddy, turn the engines on. Yo, where was this guy earlier? What the fuck? Oh my god, I just lost that, didn't I? No, I didn't. Okay, good. I just lost the game, chat. And if I lose, I lose nine points, not eight. That's a major loss alert. I'll happily trade queens here. Trust me. I'm a fucking maniac, buddy. That's what I fucking thought, pussy. Stop being a rat, man. Just take your loss and fucking move on. Fuck it. I don't care. Oh, no. Try to check me, please try to check me. Don't see my queen, don't see my queen, don't see my queen. Be stupider than me, be more stupid, be more stupid, be more stupid. Please be stupid, please be stupid. No, I just threw my game. Wow, I just threw that game. Wow, 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 there's no way this dumbass was supposed to win that game. I threw that so hard, chat. 
I'm upset. I'm actually upset. Very upset at myself. Trust me. I don't need you to be mad at me. I'm mad at myself. <sighs> okay, calculated moves only. Watch this, chat. Watch this. Calculated moves only. Bait me, buddy? Heh, <laughs> I ain't that stupid. Uh, go for your fork, dumbass. Who cares? Nobody cares about your fork. Or your castle, whatever it's called. Did he not have defense? Right, because the horse is supposed to be here. I fucked that one up. All right, well, that one sucks. He's not gonna trade that. He's not that stupid, is he? This doesn't have defense. Now I'm tilted, chat. Big tilted. Now I'm tilted. Big tilted. Now I'm just throwing pieces away, dude. Just throwing pieces away. I don't even want to play anymore. I, I honestly don't want to play anymore. Like, I, I'm just throwing. What's the point? Throwing my elo, throwing my rank. Oh.
You could have taken that without costing anything. He fucked up. You can take that, I don't give a fuck. Take it, pussy. Okay, he doesn't want to, which is a whole different story. Where's this guy from? Poland? Indonesia? Test, test, what's up, Dider? He did what you said not to do. He put the horse on the outside. I win this game, right? Sometimes I have errors <laughs> on on YouTube. Is my stream getting shut down or something? Oh, just you. Okay, okay. That's dead. Stream's not lagging, is it? Hopefully not. Only 1% watching. Everyone left me. Everyone went to go to bed. I understand. I need to go to bed. It's way past my time already. But, you know, the rule. Can't go to bed until we gotta win. Can anyone read this? I can. Maybe something is going on with my stream.
That's zero viewers. <laughs> He brings that down here. That really saves his rook. Hey, one bar resignation. That's a win in my book, chat. Not the win I wanted, but the win in in the day that we needed. Not the win I wanted, but the win on the day that I needed. Wow. Oh, I needed that win so bad so I could call it a night. Honestly, after the first throw on the chest today, I did not feel like I wanted to play chess anymore. I just did not. After that first throw, I, I did not want to play chess. I promise you. That felt so bad to throw over there. But I'm glad it's over with. I'm glad we got our first win of the night. And the only win of the night most likely because I don't want to play chess anymore. I'm going to go watch Fallout. I'm going to... I'm gonna uh, go finish my charting. I'm gonna go finish writing up notes about the stocks that I need to do better on and so on. I need a de-stressor after that first game that I threw. That game was so rough. Oh. But hey, like, like uh, Doom said, you know, if I can't become a trader, at least I'll become a trucker because of my work ethic. Because I'd be out here slaving my ass off no matter what it is. As long as I make up a my, my mind for a project, I slave my ass off for it. You know the reality of it. You see me doing every single day. A dub's a dub. Doesn't matter. A win's a win. A green day's a green day. Doesn't matter how you got it. When the money comes into the bank account, the bank doesn't know how you got it. The bank doesn't know if you got it from DJT or Tesla. All the seasons that you got paid. And then they're going to report that to the IRS so you can get IRS paid. The bank doesn't care. You shouldn't care. A win's a win. I'm going to take that and go home. Oh my god. Well, I am home. I'll take that and go to bed. I'm going to go eat some dinner. I know it's late, but I'm going to get some food in me. I'm hungry. I'm starving. I've been streaming for two hours without any food. I'm starving, so I'm going to go do that. I'll catch you guys tomorrow. 8 o'clock. Same thing. Same, same time. Same place. Hopefully no more chess mishaps like today. Good night, guys. Thanks for coming. I love you guys. Bye. Benzinga, trading trade, trade ideas, the number one scanner to go to. Trader, trader sync, pro, pro, promo code down below, promo code Pratt 15 to get 15% off. I will, I, will, I will catch you guys tomorrow, 8 o'clock, same time, same place. Until then, Trader Pratt out. Adios.